Hello everybody, I am Dr. Jitendra Pandey and I am your instructor for this module on cybercrime. After studying this module, you will be able to know the definition of cybercrime, understand and classify the cybercrimes, know the reasons for commission of cybercrimes and understand malware and classify them into various types. The expression cybercrime is a product of expansion in communications technology which has accelerated over the last 25 years. Cybercrime is a term that encompasses a variety of offenses associated with the use of information and communication technology. The internet was born around 1960s where its access was limited to few scientists, researchers and defense only. Internet user base have evolved exponentially. Initially, the computer crime was only confined to making a physical damage to the computer and related infrastructure. Around 1980s, the trend changed from causing the physical damaging to computers to making a computer malfunction using a malicious code called virus. Till then, the effect was not so widespread because internet was only confined to defense setups, large international companies and research communities. In 1996, when internet was launched for the public, it immediately became popular among the masses and they slowly became dependent on it to an extent that it have changed their lifestyle. As on April 2018, the number of mobile broadband users in India reached 401.41 million. Overall, the number of broadband subscribers including Wired in India reached 419.79 million by the end of April 2018. In the year 2017, Cyber Emergency Response Team of India handled 53,081 incidents. The types of incidents handled were website intrusion and malware propagation, malicious code, phishing, distributed denial of service attacks, website defacements and unauthorized scanning activities. In addition, 53,692 spam incidents were also reported to certain. Before discussing the matter further, let us know what the cybercrime is. The term cybercrime is used to describe an unlawful activity in which computer or computing devices such as smartphones, tablets, personal digital assistants, etc., which are standalone or a part of network which is either used as a tool or target of criminal activity or both. Let us now classify cyber crimes. The cyber criminal could be internal or external to the organizations facing the cyber attack. Based on this fact, the cyber crime could be categorized into two types, insider attack and external attack. An insider threat is a malicious threat to an organization that comes from people within the organization such as employees, former employees, contractors or business associates who have inside information concerning the organization's security practices, data and computer systems. When the attacker is either hired by an insider or an external entity to the organization, it is known as external attack. Since the attacker is external to the organization, so these attackers usually scan and gather information. The cyber attacks can also be classified as structured attack and unstructured attacks based on the level of maturity of the attackers. Structured attacks are performed by highly skilled and experienced people and the motive of these attacks are clear in their mind. They have access to sophisticated tools and technologies to gain access to the networks without being noticed by their intrusion detection system. Moreover, these attackers have the necessary expertise to develop or modify the existing tools to satisfy their purpose. These types of attacks are usually performed by professional criminals, by a country on other rival countries, politicians to damage the image of the rival person or the country, terrorist, rival companies, etc. Unstructured attacks are generally performed by amateurs who don't have any predefined motives to perform the cyber attack. Usually these amateurs try to test a tool readily available over the internet 
on the network of a random company. Cyber crimes have turned out to be a low investment, low risk business with huge returns. Nowadays, these structured crimes which are performed are highly organized. There is a perfect hierarchical organizational setup like formal organizations and some of them have reached a level in technical capabilities at par with those of developed nations. They are targeting large financial organizations, defense and nuclear establishments and they are also into online drug trading. The role of all the people in the hierarchy remains changing and it is based on the opportunity. If a hacker who have hacked sensitive data from an organization may use it for financially exploiting the organization himself. In case the hacker himself have the technical expertise for it, he'll do it himself. Otherwise, he may find a buyer who is interested in that data and have a technical expertise. There are some cyber criminals who offers on-demand services. The person, organization or a country may contact these cyber criminals for hacking an organization to gain access to some sensitive data or create massive denial of service attack on their competitors. Based on the demand of the customer, the hackers write malwares, viruses, etc. to suit their requirements. Let us now discuss the reasons for commission of cyber crimes. There are many reasons which act as a catalyst in the growth of cyber crime. Some of the prominent reasons are money. People are motivated towards committing cyber crime is to make quick and easy money. The second reason could be revenge. Some people try to take revenge with other persons, organization, society, caste or religion by defaming its reputation or bringing economical or physical loss. This comes under the category of cyber terrorism. Fun The amateur do cyber crime for fun. They just want to test the latest tool they have encountered. Another reason could be recognition. It is considered to be a pride if someone hack a highly secure networks like different sites or networks. Anonymity. Many times the anonymity that a cyberspace provides motivates the person to commit cyber crime as it is much easy to commit a cyber crime over cyberspace and remain anonymous as compared to real world. Cyber espionage. At times, the government itself is involved in a cyber trespassing to keep eye on other person, network or country. The reason could be politically, economically or socially motivated. Now we will discuss challenges of cyber crime. The first challenge is domestic and international law enforcement. A hostile party using an internet connected computer thousands of miles away can attack internet connected computers in any country as easily as if he were next door. It is often difficult to identify the criminal behind such an attack and even when a criminal is identified, criminal prosecution across international boundaries is problematic. Second challenge is lack of infrastructure. Proper monitoring and arrest calls for sophisticated state-of-the-art information and communication technology devices. The third challenge is lack of national functional databases. National database could serve as a means of tracking down the criminals of these heinous acts by checking into past individual records and tracking their movements. Prolification of cyber cafes. As a means of making ends meet, many entrepreneurs have taken to establishment of cyber cafes that serve as blissful heavens for the syndicates to practice their acts through night browsing services they provide to prospective customers without being guided or monitored. Porous nature of the internet. The internet is free for all with no central control, hence the state of anarchy presently experienced. Now we will discuss the effects of cyber crime. The first effect is financial loss. Cyber criminals are like terrorists or metal thieves in that their activities impose disproportionate cost to society and individuals. Loss of reputation. 
most companies that have been defrauded or reported to have been faced with cyber criminal activities complaints of clients losing faith in them reduced productivity this is due to awareness and more concentration being focused on preventing cyber crime and not on productivity now we will discuss various solutions to cyber crime the first solution is education cyber crime is difficult to prove as it lacks the traditional paper audit trail which requires the knowledge of specialist in computer technology and internet protocols hence we need to educate citizens that if they are going to use the internet they need to continuously maintain and update the security of their system we also need to educate corporations and organizations in the best practice of effective security management for example some large organizations now have a policy that all system in their purview must meet strict security guidelines automated updates are sent to all computers and servers on the internal network and no new system is allowed online until it conforms to the security policy next solution is establishment of programs and it forums for youth since the level of unemployment in the country has contributed significantly to the spate of e crime the government should create employments for these youths and set up it laboratories or forums where these youths could come together and display their skills this can be used meaningfully towards developing it at the same time they could be rewarded handsomely for such novelty address verification system address verification system checks could be used to ensure that the address entered on your order forms matches the address where the card holders billing statement are emailed ip address tracking software that could track the ip address of orders could be designed the software could then be used to check that the ip address of an order is from the same country included in the billing and the shipping address of the orders use of video surveillance systems problem with this method is that attention to be paid to human rights issues and legal privileges antivirus and anti spyware software antivirus software consists of computer program that attempts to identify and eliminate computer viruses and other malicious software anti spyware are used to restrict backdoor programs trojans and other spywares to be installed on the computer firewalls a firewall protects a computer network from unauthorized access network firewalls may be hardware devices software programs or a combination of the two a network firewall typically guards an internal computer network against malicious access from outside the network cryptography cryptography is a science of encrypting and decrypting information encryption is like sending a postal mail to another party with a lock code on the envelope which is known only to the sender and the recipient a number of cryptographic methods have been developed and some of them are still not cracked cyber ethics and cyber legislation laws cyber ethics and cyber laws are also being formulated to stop cyber crimes it is a responsibility of every individual to follow cyber ethics and cyber laws so that the increasing cyber crime will reduce security software like antiviruses and anti spywares should be installed on all computers in order to remain secure from cyber crimes internet service providers should also provide high level of security at their servers in order to keep their clients secure from all type of viruses and malicious programs now let us discuss malware and its types malware stands for malicious software and it is designed to gain access or install into a computer without the consent of the user they perform unwanted tasks in the host computer for the benefit of a third party there is a full range of malwares which can seriously degrade the performance of the host machine there is a full range of malwares 
which are simply written to distract or annoy the user to the complex ones which captures the sensitive data from the host machine and send it to the remote servers. There are various types of malwares present in the internet. Some of the popular ones are number one is adware. It is a special type of malware which is used for force advertising. They either redirect the page to some advertising page or pop up an additional page which promotes some product or event. These adwares are financially supported by the organizations whose products are advertised. The second one is spyware. It is a special type of malware which is installed in the target computer with or without the user permission and is designed to steal sensitive information from the target machine. Mostly, it gathers the browsing habit of the user and send it to the remote server without the knowledge of the owner of the computer. Most of the time, they are downloaded into the host computer while downloading freeware, that is free application programs from the internet. Spywares may be of various types. It can keep track of the cookies of the host computer. It can act as a keyloggers to sniff the banking passwords and sensitive information etc. The third variety of malware is browser hijacking software. There is some malicious software which are downloaded along with the free software offered over the internet and installed in the host computer without the knowledge of the user. This software modifies the browser settings and redirect links to the other unintentional sites. The next category of malware is virus. A virus is a malicious code written to damage or harm the host computer by deleting or appending a file, occupy memory space of the computer by replicating the copy of the code, slow down the performance of the computer, format the host machine, etc. It can be spread via email attachment, pen drives, digital images, e-greeting, audio or video clips, etc. A virus may be present in a computer, but it cannot activate itself without a human intervention. Until and unless the executable file or exe is executed, a virus cannot be activated in the host machine. The next category is worms. They are a class of virus which can replicate themselves. They are different from the virus by the fact that they do not require human intervention to travel over the network and spread from the infected machine to the whole network. Worms can spread either through network using the loopholes of the operating system or via email. The replication and spreading of the worm over the network consumes the network resources like space and bandwidth and force the network to choke. Next is Trojan Horse. Trojan Horse is a malicious code that is installed in the host machine by pretending to be a useful software. The user clicks on the link or download the file which pretends to be a useful file or software from a genuine source. It not only damages the host computer by manipulating the data but also it creates a backdoor in the host computer so that it could be controlled by a remote computer. It can become a part of botnet which is a network of computers which are infected by malicious code and controlled by central controller. The computers of this network which are infected by malicious code are known as zombies. Trojans neither infect the other computers in the network nor do they replicate. Scareware Internet has changed how we talk, shop, play etc. It has even changed the way how the criminal target the people for ransom. While surfing the internet, suddenly a pop-up alert appears in the screen which warns the presence of dangerous virus, spyware, etc. in the user's computer. As a remedial measure, the message suggests the user to download the full paid version of the software. As the user proceeds to download, a malicious code known as scareware is downloaded into the host computer. It holds the computer hostage until a ransom is paid. The malicious code can neither be uninstalled nor can the computer be used till the ransom is paid. Now we will discuss various kinds of cyber crime and the first one is cyber stalking. Cyber stalking is an act of stalking, harassing or threatening someone using internet 
or computer as a medium. This is often done to defame a person and use email, social network, instant messenger, web posting etc. by using internet as a medium as it offers anonymity. The behavior includes false claim to defame a person, threat, sexual exploitation to minors, monitoring etc. Child pornography. It is an act of possessing image or video of a minor who is under 18 engaged in sexual conduct, forgery and counterfeiting. It is a use of computer to forgery and counterfeiting a document. With the advancement in the hardware and the software, it is possible to produce counterfeits which matches the original document to such an extent that it is not possible to judge the authenticity of the document without expert judgment. Software piracy and crime related to IPRs. Software piracy is an illegal reproduction and distribution of software for personal use or business. It comes under crime related to IPR infringement. Some of the other crimes under IPR infringement are downloading of songs, downloading movies, etc. Cyber terrorism. It is defined as the use of computer resources to intimidate government, the civilian population or any segment thereof in furtherance to political or social objectives. Phishing. It is a process of acquiring personal and sensitive information of an individual via email by disguising as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. The purpose of phishing is identity theft and the personal information like username, password and credit card number etc. may be used to steal money from the user account. If a telephone is used as a medium for identity theft, it is known as phishing or voice phishing. Another form of phishing is smishing in which SMS is used to lure customers. Computer vandalism. It is an act of physically destroying computer resources using physical force or malicious code. Computer hacking. It is a practice of modifying computer hardware and software to accomplish a goal outside the creator's original purpose. The purpose of hacking a computer system may vary from simple demonstrations of technical ability to stealing, modifying or destroying information for social, economic or political reasons. Now the corporates are hiring hackers, a person who is engaged in hacking computers to intentionally hack the computer of an organization to find and fix security vulnerabilities. The hackers may be classified as white hat. White hat hackers are the persons who hack the system to find the security vulnerabilities of a system and notify to the organizations so that the preventive action can be taken to protect the system from the outside hackers. White hat hackers may be paid employees of an organization who is employed to find the security loopholes or may be a freelancer who just want to prove his mental in the field. They are popularly known as ethical hackers. Black hat hackers. In contrast to the white hat, the black hat hack the system with ill intentions. They may hack the system for social, political or economically motivated intentions. They find the security loopholes of a system and keep the information themselves and exploit the system for personal or organizational benefits till the organization whose system is compromised is aware of this and apply security patches. They are popularly known as crackers. Grey hat. Grey hat hackers find out the security vulnerabilities and report to the site administrators and offer the fix to the security bug for a consultancy fee. Blue Hat A blue hat hacker is someone outside computer security consulting firms who is used to bug test a system prior to its launch looking for exploits so that they can be closed. The next kind of cybercrime is 
creating and distributing viruses over internet. The spreading of a virus caused business and financial loss to an organization. The loss includes the cost of repairing the system, cost associated with the loss of business during the downtime, and the cost of opportunity. The organization can sue the hacker if found for the sum of more than or equivalent to the loss borne by the organization. Spamming Sending of unsolicited and commercially bulk message over the internet is known as spamming. An email can be classified as a spam if it meets following criteria. First is mass mailing. The email is not targeted to one particular person but to a large number of people. Second is anonymity. The real identity of the person is not known. And the third is unsolicited. The email is neither expected nor requested for the recipient. These spams not only irritate the recipients and overload the network but also waste the time and occupy the valuable memory space of the mailbox. Online Auction Fraud There are many genuine websites who offers online auction over internet. Taking the advantage of the reputation of these websites some of the cyber criminals lure the customers to online auction fraud schemes which often lead to either overpayment of the product or the item is never delivered once the payment is made. Cyber squatting. It is an act of reserving the domain names of someone else's trademark with intent to sell it afterwards to the organization who is the owner of the trademark at a higher price. Logic bombs. These are malicious code inserted into a legitimate software. The malicious action is triggered by some specific condition. If the conditions hold true in future, the malicious action begins and based on the action defined in the malicious code, they either destroy the information stored in the system or make system unusable. Webjacking the hacker gains the access to a website of an organization and either block it or modify it to serve political, economical, or social interest. Internet time thefts. Hacking the username and password of ISP of an individual and surfing the internet at his cost is internet time theft. Denial of service attack. It is a cyber attack in which the network is choked and often collapsed by flooding it with useless traffic and thus preventing the legitimate network traffic. Salami attack. It is an attack which proceeds with small increments and final add up to lead a major attack. The increments are so small that they remain unnoticed. An example of salami attack is gaining access to online banking of an individual and withdrawing amount in such a small amount that it remains unnoticed by the owner. Often there is a default trigger set in the banking website and transaction below say rupees 1000 withdrawal are not reported to the owner. Withdrawing amount of rupees 10,000 over a period of time will lead to a total withdrawal of a large sum of money. Data diddling. It is a practice of changing the data before its entry into the computer system. Often the original data is retained after the execution on the data is done. For example, DA or a basic salary of a person is changed in the payroll data of an individual for pay calculation. Once the salary is calculated and transferred to his account, the total salary is replaced by his actual salary in the report. Email is proofing. It is a process of changing the header information of an email so that its original source is not identified and it appears to an individual at the receiving end that the email has been originated from source other than the original source. So in this lecture we have discussed about cybercrime, its classification and its types followed by a detailed note on malware and its type.
I hope this lecture was useful for you and helped you in attaining your learning objectives. Thank you.